Are you thinking about calling a realtor and moving to Ohio? I know most of you just yelled hell no, but things are changing in Ohio and it's not all bad anymore. What is going on everyone? Let's take a look at the pros and cons of the Buckeye State, Ohio. Ohio is a state that has seen better times, and if you look at how they're doing now, it's also seen some worse times. I think Ohio is at the beginning of an upswing. The state has almost 12 million residents and has never seen a census where they actually lost population. In the 1990 census, they got close by gaining only half a percent, but most decades, Ohio has seen 10% growth or better. And that's not normal. When an economy of a state takes it in the pants like Ohio has, people usually start flooding out. Ohio has some good things going on, but it still has some negatives. Today, we're looking at the five biggest problems they have and five of the best things going on in this Rust Belt state. All right, let's take a look. Number one, jobs. Ohio has been a giant sucking void of unemployment and despair since the collapse of the American manufacturing in the 1970s and 80s. And before you say it, stop typing. They still have manufacturing, but there was a serious decline. From the 1970s to the 2010s, they had lost almost 800,000 manufacturing jobs statewide. But that was then, and around 2012, things started to change. These days, Ohio has a booming job market. Maybe not the entire state, but there's pockets where they've got serious job growth. The sectors that are growing are IT, medical, manufacturing, and tourism. Some of the top job providers in Ohio include the Cleveland Clinic, Walmart, Giant Eagle, Honda Motor Company, and Berkshire Hathaway. They also have a lot of government jobs and, you know, military and just normal government like Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. That's a big employer there. And the future looks pretty good. Ohio wrangled Intel into building a 20 billion chip making factory in the state that should employ a whole bunch of people. That, by the way, is kind of getting fast tracked because we're having this global shortage of computer chips and stuff. So Ohio should be seeing the impact from that pretty soon. It's also slowly becoming a hot spot for remote workers. So you got other people moving there because of price and they're just working from home. So that doesn't help the employment numbers, but people are bringing jobs in themselves and moving to Ohio. Number two, home prices. It is dirt cheap to buy a home in the state of Ohio. There's a few places like Columbus where it can get a little expensive, but compared to other states like California, New York, Texas, Oregon, they're not that bad. A majority of this state still has decent homes under 200,000. I'm talking 175 to 200,000. You could buy a decent livable home. Sure, they have some rundown ones that are below 100,000 in some places, but if you're looking for something decent near a city, maybe a suburb or something like that, you can still find decent homes in Ohio for about $180,000. When it comes to the median rent price in Ohio, now this is statewide, so don't bring up, oh, I live in Columbus, my rent's twice as much as that. The median rent in Ohio is about $1,200, which is about $270 less than the national average. And make sure you look at the upload date of this. It's 2022. I'm sure if you're watching this in 2024, prices will have changed. So Ohio's a great place to find a good realtor or real estate agent, whatever you want to call them. Start looking at homes. And it's not just real estate in Ohio that's cheap. Their cost of living, so everything across the board, is cheaper in Ohio. They're always in the top 10 for the lowest cost of living. Number three entertainment. If you're not from Ohio or you're not really familiar with it, you probably have no idea that this place has a lot of entertainment options. First of all, it's one of the most sports-minded states in the country. College football is insane here. You have Ohio State University, you have Ohio University, the Akron Zips, Bowling Green, Cincinnati Bearcats, Cleveland State Vikings, Daytona Flyers, Kent State is here, Miami Redhawks, Ohio Bobcats, which I already said, and Ohio State Buckeyes, the University of Toledo and the Toledo Rockets, you have Wright State University, Xavier, and Youngstown. That's just the Division I. They have a crazy amount of Division II and III teams as well. You have the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns, which have some of the most diehard fans you will find on the planet. I'm a Cleveland Browns fan myself. I live in Oregon. They even have the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. When it comes to baseball, you got the Cincinnati Reds, and in Cleveland, you have the Indians, which I'm not getting behind that whole Guardians thing. They've just changed their name recently. It used to be the Cleveland Indians, now it's got to be the Cleveland Guardians. And then in hockey, you got Columbus Blue Jackets, and of course, the Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA. And that's just sports. You look at like amusement parks, you got Cedar Point and Kings Island, two of the best amusement parks on the planet. 
They have great zoos like the Columbus Zoo and the Toledo Zoo. And if you like the outdoor stuff, you have the Cuyahoga Valley National Park and Hawking Hills State Park. There's a bunch of other ones too. Those are just some of the big ones. It sits on Lake Erie. Ohio is a great state to entertain yourself. And I'm not even going to get into all the museums and stuff. They have plenty of those. One I will mention that's sort of a museum, but it's just a house. The Christmas Story house is in Cleveland. Remember the movie, The Christmas Story? Kid got his tongue stuck to the pole. The house that Ralphie lived in is in Cleveland. Number four, the people. If you don't know anyone from Ohio, I would suggest you find someone from Ohio and get to know them. In my experience, they always seem to share a couple different traits. The first one is they're hardworking. These people are not afraid to work. Work hard, work with their hands, work with their mind. Whatever you want, you're going to get a good employee out of someone from Ohio. I don't know what it is. I think it's just their culture and how they're brought up in this state. Ohio is known as a blue collar state and these people, they just, that's how they are. They take pride in it. They don't brag about it. They're just, that's what's expected and they live up to that the other thing that i've noticed my experience is they have no time for fake bs like you know if you you know fake it till you make it type person they have no time for you be real be honest be yourself and you'll have friends from ohio act like a sleazy car salesman you'll find yourself standing alone at a cleveland browns game Number five, healthcare. Ohio is always in the top 10 when it comes to states with the best healthcare. They just always are. I don't know what their deal is. I don't know why they excel at this and have sucked at other things over time. Healthcare is always good in Ohio. It's kind of hard not to be good when you got places like the Cleveland Clinic, Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center, and University Hospitals Cleveland Medical Center. Pick any major city, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Dayton, Columbus, Youngstown, Akron. They all have great hospitals that they should be proud of. Over the years of doing these lists, whenever I'm looking something up about healthcare, the Cleveland Clinic always seems to be in the top 10 of any lists about healthcare. Number one, it's a very divided state. Ohio is a state that doesn't have a lot of diversity compared to other states. I'm sure if you're in certain areas, you're going to say, no, we have plenty of diversity. No, compared to other states, there's very little diversity in Ohio. It always shows up on lists where they're talking about states that are very divided and segregated still. And when you look at cities, Cleveland and Columbus are very segregated. Now, that's just the segregation part. Then you have a serious divide when it comes to politics. Ohio is a battleground state. Being one of the largest battleground states in the country, every year the state is overrun by the national politicians and the media hordes that follow them. Campaign ads to the point where some people actually list it as a reason why they want to leave the state. Now, those of you that are into politics are trying to figure out why someone would want to leave for that. That's like the Super Bowl to you. That's like Christmas and the 4th of July all mixed to one. A big political Donnybrook in your front yard sounds like a good time. Keep in mind, over half the population of this country can't stand politics. They don't want to talk about it. It. They don't want to hear about it. They just want to vote and go about their business. I mean, it's good to be informed about politics, but it's not good when you're obsessed and you can't do anything but talk about politics. I was really hesitant about putting this one in this video because it's just going to set the whole comment section ablaze with a whole bunch of stupidity. But it is something that people in Ohio complain about, so it had to go in here. Number two, the weather. Winters are harsh, weather is unpredictable, and during the summer, you'll find out how bad mosquitoes suck when you're in Ohio. You're like an accidental blood donor in July. But like I said, weather is hardly predictable in Ohio, especially when it comes to spring. Some years you might not get a spring. It might go from summer to like four days of spring and then on into winter or fall at least. Snow in March isn't unheard of in Ohio. Actually, it's better described as not uncommon. Nothing like trying to celebrate Cinco de Mayo in Cleveland and you're wearing a winter jacket. Talk to anyone that's from Ohio about the weather and you will see their demeanor change. They get worked up, really worked up. They say, oh, you know what sucks about Ohio weather? And they get all gruff and they tighten up. It's actually kind of entertaining. I told someone that the weather in Oregon was rough one time and he's actually from just outside of Cleveland. Oh my God, I thought the dude was going to blow a gasket on me. Oh, dude, you have no idea how bad it gets. Number three, it can get dangerous. 
Ohio has a reputation for being dangerous in some places, especially like Cleveland and Dayton, Ohio. Crime rates in those cities are pretty high most of the time. They've gotten better over the last few years, but for most of the last two decades, those two cities always seem to show up in the top 20 for the most dangerous cities in the United States. They're not good. Toledo's no gem either. Ohio was also one of the biggest states when it came to the opioid crisis. Right now, they're dealing with fatal fentanyl cases and is just dragging the state down. It has gotten better, and it's trending better, but it's still pretty bad. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on the crime in Cleveland and Dayton. I mean, I've talked about those on other videos, but it just can get bad. The good news is it's getting a little better. Number four, getting around. Ohio is one of the worst places when it comes to transportation. One, they have some of the worst drivers in the country. Two, the roads are really sketchy, especially come wintertime. Black ice and snowstorms are always a great addition to any road trip. And then when summer finally gets here, they're so busy fixing the roads and potholes and all that other stuff and adding new roads here, resurfacing roads, that there's orange cones and traffic throughout the state because they can't do any of that stuff in the winter because the winters are so harsh in Ohio. Cleveland is also one of the pothole capitals of the world, so that's always great. In my experience, there's only two cities that have worse maintained roads than Cleveland, Ohio. San Antonio, Texas, and the worst of all is New Orleans. On top of all that, the major cities in Ohio, most of them are considered to have some of the worst public transit in the country. They are adding some things and some things have gotten a little better in the last few years, but they're well behind most other cities their size. Number five, mental health. Ohio is one of those states that always seems to show up when we're talking about states with the most depression or mental health issues. Ohio has a lot of it. Now, most of the problems can be traced to the weather and the lack of jobs that they've had in the past. That's the problem we have here in Oregon. It rains so much and we have such cloudy skies that people get depressed. Crime and addiction problems that this state faces are also big factors in their mental health as well. If there is any good news to this, like I said earlier, they got great health care, which includes mental health care. They've got a lot of options for people that are suffering through that in Ohio. It's definitely a state you have to take vitamin D supplements in. That's what they suggest you do here in Oregon because you don't get enough vitamin D. Vitamin D comes from the sun and vitamin D helps you with your mood. Get a big bottle of vitamin D and never listen to Sarah McLaughlin music. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. What would you have added to this one? What would you have taken away? Let me know in the comment section below. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.